Welcome to my podcast. Today I will be previewing the unrestricted free agents in 2016 for this upcoming summer. Uh, I will be previewing the defense and goaltenders. I will start with the goaltenders that will be available that are of significance. Kim Ward is likely going to be the top free agent goalie this summer. Some teams that will be after Cam Ward's services are the Colorado Avalanche, the Edmonton Oilers, and the Calgary Flames. All three of those teams would be interested in a 1A, 1B goaltending tandem because they already have one starting goalie in place but they would also like a fallback plan. Kim Ward does not have the durability of the number one goalie anymore, but he is a very good goalie still, and he can be a good fallback option for those teams. Uh, Another goalie that would be very good to have would be Jonas Hiller. Jonas Hiller isn't as valuable as he was when he was with Anaheim, but he can still be a solid number two goalie in the NHL. He isn't likely to return to Calgary, but some teams that would be interested in Jonas Hiller are the Edmonton Oilers, the Philadelphia Flyers, and the Buffalo Sabres. All three teams are in search of number two goalies or number one goalies, depending on how you look at it. Because they're probably, all three of those teams are looking for tandem goalies because they don't really have a solid number one. Um, Another goalie on the market would be Kari Ramo. Kari Ramo is another goaltender that the Flames may or not may not resign, but based on the performance this year, they're likely not going to bring him back. Kari Ramo would probably be interested in joining the Buffalo Sabres, Carolina Hurricanes, and Columbus Blue Jackets. All three of those teams would benefit in his services as they could need a good number two goalie to back up their number one goalies. You see, the recurring theme in these free agents are there aren't, there isn't really a bona fide number one goalie. All of these goalies are likely going to be either a 1A, 1B. They're splitting time with other goalies and that's the way the NHL is structured now most teams are going to go with tandem goalies that's the way the NHL works it is rare that you see a workhorse goalie you can just name a few of them off the top of your head Anton Kudobin is another goaltender that's available on the market this free agency Um, I would not rule out a turn to Carolina because that's where he played his best hockey at. And he would definitely be a good backup for Eddie Black. Another option is Toronto and LA, as those teams both need backup goalies. James Reimer may very well be possibly the most sought after free agent after the season he had had. James Reimer would be a good fit in Florida. At the age of 35, 36, Roberto Luongo cannot consistently play 70 games. So you're going to have to bring in a number two goalie that can relieve some of the pressure off Luongo and reduce his workload a little bit. James Reimer would be a good option there. Um, He would also 
be a good fit in San Jose as a number two goalie. And Toronto would not be a bad option either. As a return to Toronto would be fitting, but that's highly unlikely. Chad Johnson is having a miraculous season, which is why he might be one of the more softer goalies because he's probably not going to make as much money as like a Cam Ward, Jonas Hiller, James Reimer, but he's a very serviceable goalie, which makes him an attractive free agent. A uh, team that's interested in him would be the Washington Capitals, Buffalo Sabres, who would want to retain him, and the Calgary Flames. The Washington Capitals currently have Justin Peters as their backup goalie. All right. They had Justin Peters and uh, Grubauer as well. But I think Chad Johnson would be an upgrade over those two goalies. As good as Braden Holby is, Sometimes you don't want to burn out your number one goalie for the playoffs. And Al Montoya is currently the number two goalie for Florida. I expect him to go elsewhere this offseason after the season he has had. And San Jose would be inquiring in his services as they need a backup goalie for Martin Jones. I would not rule out a return to Florida, but I think that Al Montoya would go elsewhere if he gets a better contract elsewhere. Another team would be the Buffalo Sabres if Chad Johnson, Johnson doesn't resign with them. Jonas Gustafson is another option as a backup goalie. Jonas Gustafson is having an all right season with the Boston Bruins. He, you know what he provides. He can be a backup goalie. He'll play 10, 12 games as a backup goalie, which makes him a suitable backup goalie for teams with workhorse goalies. So he would fit the Boston Bruins, LA Kings, and the New York Rangers. Another goaltender that, and the last goaltender that is of significance is Antti Ranta. He's currently playing for the Rangers, but because the New York Rangers are limited on cap space and they don't have much to offer him, I would not rule out Antti Ranta leaving, especially if Antti Ranta does really good during the stretch that Longquist is out. So I think he would be a good fit with the Boston Bruins if Jonas Gustafson decides to leave Boston. If Ranta wants to win a cup, his best option is with the Rangers. So if, if he wants more money, he would want to go with Florida. And that's all the goaltenders that I think are of significance for the 2016 class for goalies. So to wrap that up, Cam Ward, Jonas Hiller, Kari Ramu, Anton Kudobin, James Reimer, Chad Johnson, Al Montoya, Jonas Gustafson, and Antti Ranta. Now for the defensemen. Keith Yandel is going to be the price free agent defenseman this year. He is probably after uh, Steven Stamkos, Kyle Oposo, David Backus, and Eric Stahl, the most highly sought after free agent in this class. Keith Yandel is a very important player. He can be a good player puck moving defenseman that anchors your power play and many teams are going to be lining up to sign him. The question is, who is going to get Keith Yandel? The New York Rangers 
have to re-sign a lot of their key players. While it is a good luxury to have Keith Yandel, he isn't necessarily playing on their top four. He plays on their top power play unit, but he doesn't play on their top four, which makes him kind of expendable because he the Rangers need to sign more important players on their team. So Keith Gandalf would be a good fit on the Philadelphia Flyers, who are in need of puck-moving defensemen, because you can never have enough. He would be a good fit along with Shane Gossespierre on the top power play unit. That would make them a real lethal power play. Another team would be the Edmonton Oilers. Edmonton Oilers would really benefit from having a power play anchor. And the Buffalo Sabres would be the third team on the list. Another team to throw in here is the De- Detroit Red Wings, who have been actually the team that was mentioned before the Rangers got him at the trade deadline. The Red Wings are actually Keith Yandel's hometown team. So Keith Yandel could end up going there. It's a possibility. So the teams that would be most interested are the Detroit Red Wings, and then the Oilers, and Philadelphia Flyers. Brian Campbell is the second best free agent defenseman, even though he's getting up there in age. He can still move the puck well. He's still a good, uh, sorry, he's still a good smooth skating defenseman and has Stanley Cup pedigree, has playoff experience, and can be a good veteran mentor for young defensemen. Brian Campbell would be a good fit on the Edmonton Oilers if they miss out on Keith Yandel. Uh, he would be a good fit on Florida if he decides to resign there. And also the Vancouver Canucks would be interested in him. Chris Russell is likely going to resign with Dallas. With Dallas giving up so much to get him at the trade deadline, it's hard to imagine them not re-signing him. But in the case that Chris Russell doesn't re-sign with Dallas, other teams that would be interested in Chris Russell are the Colorado Avalanche and the Florida Panthers. Alex Golgowski is the next best defenseman on the list. He is a good top four defenseman. He can be a puck moving defenseman as well. I would say he can play on the second power play unit. Yeah, sure, he's not a top tier defenseman, but he can serve as a good top four defenseman, which is important in the NHL to have depth on your blue line. And teams that would like to inquire about him are the Vancouver Canucks, the Dallas Stars, who would want to re-sign him, and the New York Rangers, who would want to re- replace Keith Yandel if he leaves, and the retiring Dan Boyle as well. Tom Gilbert, oh, sorry, no, I didn't miss him. Tom Gilbert is the next player on the list. Tom Gilbert is a very underrated defenseman. He plays two ways and he can play on the top four and be a good penalty killer. He could play on the power play if needed. He's a very versatile defenseman. Teams that would inquire on him are the Chicago Blackhawks, the LA Kings, and the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, it's possible that that Tom Gilbert would take less money to sign with the Blackhawks or Kings, so he would get get a Stanley Cup win. 
Uh, Dan Hughes is another player that many teams would love to get. Dan Hughes is not a flashy defenseman, but he's the type of defenseman that you would love to have on your team because he steadies the flow of your defense. He's what you call a defensive anchor. Dan Hughes is a player you have to be cautious of signing, though. If when he gets up there in age, if you decide to sign it to a long-term contract, due to the way he plays, his body can start breaking down. But in any case, three teams that would be interested in him are the Florida Panthers, the Winnipeg Jets, and the Columbus Blue Jackets. Three teams with young defensemen that would need veteran defensemen to mentor them. Jason Demers is another defenseman that really would be a good, solid, top four defenseman on the market this free agency. Yes, he's another Dallas Stars defenseman. Jason Demers could return to Dallas, but due to the fact he's probably going to be asking for too much money, at least more than Dallas is going to be willing to pay, uh, he's going to be going to play for either the Rangers or the Winnipeg Jets. The Rangers would probably sign him for less money than he would with Dallas because he would sign for the, with the Rangers for less money because of the ability to win a cup with them. Some pl- the recurring theme here is players signing with contending teams for less money at a chance of a cup rather than going out and signing a luxurious contract with a bad team. Not saying Dallas is bad, but the in the Western Conference, it's so packed. Whereas in the Eastern Conference, there are logistically only a few teams you have to really worry about. Roman Polak is a defensive defenseman that would likely sign with the Detroit Red Wings. The Detroit Red Wings need to replace the leaving Kyle Quincy, and he would be a good replacement for him. Uh, Other teams that would be interested in him are the Columbus Blue Jackets and the New York Rangers. Willie Mitchell is another defenseman on this list. He is currently the captain of the Florida Panthers. Of course, they would love to bring him back, but if he asked for too much money, he would probably go to the Buffalo Sabres. And the Columbus Blue Jackets are also an option. Kyle Quincy is another defenseman on the market. The Arizona Coyotes are the team that probably can offer him the most money. The Detroit Red Wings would also be in pursuit to bring him back. But due to the fact that Arizona can offer him a lot more money than Detroit would, I think he would go to Arizona. And Edmonton Oilers would also be in the mix. But due to the fact that they have a logjam on the fence, Kyle Quincy would be smart to go to Arizona. Kevin Miller. Kevin Miller is a pretty underrated defenseman. He can play in your top pair defenseman if you have a stud defenseman on your team. But he has proven that he is a very good defenseman in his own right. He can play two ways. He can play on the penalty kill. And 
he can play on their, your shutdown pair. Uh, teams that would be interested in him would be the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Boston Bruins, of course, would love to retain him, but if other teams come along and offer him a luxurious contract, due to their cap restrictions, they can't keep him. And the Arizona Coyotes are the other team that would be involved. David Schlemko is having a good year this year. After signing with the Devils for almost league minimum, he is going to get a significant pay raise, and I think he would re-sign with the Devils because re-signing with the Devils would give him the best chance to play the most minutes, and they have the most money to offer him. So he would be smart to resign with them. And if he doesn't resign with the Devils, then other teams in the mix would be the Detroit Red Wings and the Vancouver Canucks. John Michael Lyles would entertain a return to Boston, but I think that's highly unlikely. Other teams in the mix are the New York Rangers and the Chicago Blackhawks. I think the Rangers would be the best fit because they would really want to replace um, Dan Boyle. But if he really wants to win the Stanley Cup, he would go with Chicago because they need a punk movie defenseman. And John Michael Lyles could fit on their team. Luke Shin, after the trade from Philly to L.A., I think he's going to stay with the L.A. Kings because he fits with their identity. He doesn't need to do much on their team, which is why he's a good fit on their team. If he doesn't resign with L.A., other teams interested would be the Chicago Blackhawks and the Minnesota Wild. The Minnesota Wild have the most money to offer him, but the Chicago Blackhawks and the LA Kings offer him the best chance to win. Nicholas Grossman is a physical, bruising defenseman who is likely going to retain what he's earning right now. A team that would be really interested in his services are the Winnipeg Jets. Due to the fact that Jacob Truba may get traded in the offseason due to co contract disputes and contract demands, Nicholas Grossman is not a bad replacement for him. Another option is to return to Arizona. And Calgary is also not a bad option as they need a replacement for Chris Russell. Mark Barbario is having a good second half of the season in place of uh, many injured players in Montreal. He's playing on top power play unit and top defensive pair right now with Subban injured. Mark Barbario would fit on the Vancouver Canucks, the Chicago Blackhawks, and the Edmonton Oilers. Matt Barkowski would be a good top six defenseman. He would fit on contending teams like the Minnesota Wild, Chicago Blackhawks, and the Vancouver Canucks who aren't a contending team, but they would offer him the most money. Grant, Grant Clint, I'm sorry, would be another player available on free agency. Clint Sum would be the best fit with Vancouver. They need defensemen, period. 
Another team in the mix are the Arizona Coyotes and the Winnipeg Jets, who need depth on their defense. Christian Erhoff is the last significant defenseman on this list. I see him going with the Montreal Canadiens. Of course, I wouldn't rule out a return to Chicago, but I don't see him resigning with the Blackhawks. With the younger defenseman coming up and the options available in free agency. However, Montreal is the best fit with him be- for him because he can play on the third pair and second power play. And another third fit would be the Dallas Stars. He would be a good replacement for Alex Golagowski. Um, so to sum up the free agent defensemen in this class, they are Keith Yandel, Brian Campbell, Chris Russell, Alex Golagowski, Dan Hamuse, Tom Gilbert, Jason Demers, Roman Polak, Willie Mitchell, Kyle Quincy, Kevin Miller, David Schlemko, John Michael Lyles, Luke Shen, Nicholas Grossman, Mark Barbario, Matt Barkowski, Grant Clinsom, and Christian Erhoff. Next podcast, I will talk about restricted free agents that may be available for trade.